Hi, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh, and today we're going to talk about scratch building the H quad. Now, if you guys haven't seen, we did a review on this, and this is a scratch build frame that you can easily build. Now, this isn't your typical platform. Most uh, quadcopters that are in X configuration have a central hub. The H quad gives you a lot more real estate to put a lot more equipment on. So, if you're flying FPV or ca lifting cameras, it's very, very useful for that reason. Also, with its large platform on it, you can actually move your battery around to balance it for any kind of needs. Where when normally you have that small center area, you have to kind of extend the battery and build extra devices to move things around. It's kind of inconvenient. So go ahead and download our plans. Um, it's not going to be patterns this time. All you're going to need to do is actually take the dimensions off of it because there's really only six pieces you need to cut out. Download the plans in our typical location and once you do so, go ahead and get your wood. Uh, for you guys to know, that's half inch poplar and we're just simply using simple uh, light ply for the uh, top and bottom plates and also some uh, 3 16 balsa wood to act as a filler for spacing. Um, go ahead and get those materials and once again it's all on the uh, plans and the material lists and uh, we'll get started. Now that we have our uh, plans downloaded and our pieces cut out, you can see that's just basically six pieces of wood is all you need to worry about. Uh, this is our original stock we started with. This is half inch by half inch poplar, 36 inches long, and this is just simple light ply. Now what we did with the light ply is we actually dimensioned this to three inches by 17 and a half and the bottom plate is a little bit longer to hold any kind of camera gear we want. You can choose, if you don't want to use that, you can actually choose to keep the top and the bottom plate the same dimension, but this one is three inches by 19 inches. And uh, for you guys out there across the pond that use metric, on the plans I will have a conversion for you so you can just go off of centimeters and have everything work out just fine for you. Now that our pieces are cut out, the very first step we're going to be doing is actually marking out where our motors are going to go. After we mark out where our motors are going to go, and we're going to be using our 18 inch pieces of uh, poplar uh, for that. That's going to be the ones that the motors are mounted for. The uh, 16 and a half inch pieces are going to actually be bracing to go between the two motor, I guess you can call them booms. Um, now that we have the motors laid out, we're going to go ahead and drill them out with the screw size you want. Now I'm using eighth inch screws um, that are going to go through the half inch poplar. So make sure you have a size that's not going to split your wood because it's going to be mounted at the very, very end. Our next step is going to be to actually assemble the frame. What we're going to do is we're going to mark the center point of our engine mount boom uh, and, and go off of that. Since the uh, frame is three inches wide, we're going to measure an inch and a half on each side. Once we do that, we'll actually know how to line up the top plate of our frame to the actual boom. That's going to give us our markings. So the center goes right down the middle of the frame. Once we do that, we're going to go ahead and making sure that everything's perpendicular, we're going to glue the engine mount boom to the actual frame itself, uh, top plate. Make sure you take extra care and glue in that extra solid and let it dry. If you have to let it dry a little bit, take your time because it's a very quick build. You don't want the glue to be loose and things to move around and not be uh, perfect right angles. Once your motor mount boom is glued, you're going to go ahead and glue on your two frame booms going on the outside edges of your actual uh, top plate uh, and, and joining up with also with glue against your motor mount boom. If you don't glue the actual joint between your motor mount boom and your frame boom, you're going to have twisting. So take extra time to make sure your joints are really, really tight. If you have to sand it a little bit smaller, it's okay. It's better to have a perfect fit than the exact dimensions to match. Go ahead and glue those two, uh, two frame booms and then move on to your final engine mount boom, uh, pushing up against the two frame booms as tight as possible. Even if it doesn't mount your frame uh, because of adjustments you had to make earlier, it's okay because perpendicular and tight glue joints are the key to success with this one. Once you get that done, make sure everything's still perpendicular. If it's not, crack it loose and start over. It's better to do that now than to have things crooked and go down later on down the line. By this time, your frame is all assembled, and the next step is going to be actually putting in a spacer plate. Now, we're using on the original one, plush 30s, and there's a high, I think it's called a capacitor, in there that's pretty thick and that top plate kind of squeezed down a little bit tight so what I did is I just took some simple 3 16 inch balsa wood loose fiber lightweight and build a spacer there so it actually give a little bit more cavity space for your electronics to go through now you can choose to do the step or not but what I also like for this is actually I can cut out a groove and have your wires pass through that that way what you're doing is you're not compromising the structure by having to drill this out to let your motor mount wires go through it all is done through this little uh, spacer plate right here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this 3 16 spacer we're going to go ahead and outline the whole perimeter of the uh, of the frame, leaving a lack of glue in the areas that you want to cut out for later. You can always cut it out and chew it out and scrape off the glue later, but if you know where you're going to put it, go ahead and leave just that little space of glue not there. That way you can go ahead and cut it out and it'll be a nice clean, uh, clean break. Now that we have our frame built, our next step is going to be to cut a relief into the balsa wood spacers so our motor wires can pass through to the ESC. That way everything won't be pinched and it'll fit nice and flush. Now that the reliefs are cut through our balsa wood spacers, our next step is to drill the pilot holes for our bottom plate to mount to our quad frame. The reason we're doing this now is because once we have our motors mounted and all our electronics in, 
to flip it upside down and put it on a building table, you're going to be pushing on motors and things you don't want to push on. So go ahead and drill your pilot holes now. That way, once all your electronics are in, you simply can put your wood screws right in there. And, and by the way, use small wood screws. You don't need to use anything to bite in very far because it's not really structural in any way. This is just a cover to keep all your electronics hidden and also out of... Uh, harm's way I guess you could say so it doesn't get snagged by anything with grass or by hands uh, it just cleans up everything really really nice at this point the quad frame is officially done the next step is going to be electronics but before we put the electronics in we went ahead and weighed it and it actually weighs 227 grams I think a very respectable weight for a quad this size now for the electronics on this we're going to use a DT750s on this quad uh, it's a very reliable engine it's very affordable and also we've used a lot of airplanes and also as you've seen on the H quad review with great power results and good efficiency. The one thing we're going to try differently is we're going to use these red brick ESCs, these 25 ramp red bricks. Not sure how they're going to work on quads but we're going to find out. Our original quad was built with plush 30s and if these don't work I strongly recommend ordering plush 30s but we wanted to give you some variety because the plush is such a popular line oftentimes they're on back order. So hopefully if one's on back order the other one will be in stock and hopefully this will work good. I'm not sure how uh, different speed controls are better for different applications. I don't know that knowledge, but I do know sometimes some work better than others. We do know for a fact that the plushes are awesome. So if you can get the plush 30s, get the plush 30s, but hopefully these red bricks will perform just as good. The first step we're going to be doing and putting our electronics in is going to be putting the motor mounts on. Now when you put your motor mounts on, put the motor mounts so the Allen screws to fasten your motor mounts are perpendicular to the boom. If you put it horizontal, it's going to be really hard to adjust the back uh, Allen key to, uh, to lock in your motor. So put them horizontally. Uh, also use Loctite on your motors. The last thing you want, if you watched your Simple Quad episode, you saw I lost the motor on takeoff during Maiden. You don't want that. It's embarrassing. And also if you're carrying FPV equipment, you don't want this thing tumbling out of the air because you forgot to put a drop of Loctite on a nut. So go ahead and uh, mount your hardware. Uh, once again, I'm using uh, 3 quarter inch uh, 8 mil or 8 inch uh, screws. You can use whatever you want. Just make sure it's mounted securely. Now the motor mounts are securely fastened with Loctite, mind you. Uh, next step is going to be to install our motors. Now when you install your motors, run the back side of the motor wires to the back side of the boom arms and then fasten it with a zip tie once you get everything connected. That way it'll go right through the relief and it'll be as hidden as possible, also clear from obstructions and getting damaged as well too. Now that our uh, motors and our ESCs are connected and the wires are ran into the cavity, the next step is going to be to actually connect everything with power. And for that, we need to take all four speed controls, positive and negative connections, and unite them to one common bond. Now there's many different ways of doing this, and Hobby King even sells a really nice distribution board, but the way I have this, unfortunately, the distribution board won't fit. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to simply take some copper wire here, we're going to connect our, our speed controls together. Now you can change the length of your uh, ESC wires to get them as close as possible. I didn't do a very good job on this one, but I'm gonna uh, bridge the gap with this copper wire. Uh, before I solder anything though, I'm gonna make sure I have heat shrink tubing that can actually slide over the whole mess and, and cover it up and insulate it because the last thing you want is the hot and the negative to touch each other. It'll be cat or catastrophic, really, really bad. So don't do it. And uh, we're going to solder that all together. And what I'm going to try is something a little bit different. Once I make these connections and bridge the gap between, the speed controls are going to come together at an angle this way. Most of the time you bundle them in together this way. But it's very, very hard to flow solder evenly so you don't have a cold solder joint somewhere. So we're going to try to pair it up two and two and then bridge the gap with this copper wire. And then we're going to pigtail off of this and run our power leads and then insulate the whole mess with some heat shrink tubing. Now that we have our ESCs all combined to a common power and a common ground, the next step is going to be putting on a uh, XT60 or an EC3 or a Dean's connector, depending on what kind of batteries you are your favorite, or I should say battery connectors. Uh, we like XT60s, and that's what I'm going to do right now. Now that we have our XT60 fastened, the next step, uh, as you can see what we've done, is we've actually reinstalled all the ESCs, and we were really careful when we installed the ESCs to make sure that we took the three leads from the ESC to a motor. It's very easy with all these speed controls being next to each other to accidentally get one lead from one ESC to the wrong motor. So be careful when you route those. Make sure that all the leads from the ESC go to the assigned motor that's wanted. Now what we did just to keep everything from bending too sharp is we actually crisscrossed the wires. You don't need to do that if you don't want to, but we chose to do that just so it had a nice easy radius on the wire didn't fatigue it and also when we mounted our uh, relief or cut our relief for our battery we gave the um the wire a relief as well too so it wasn't making a hard angle going right out and also you can kind of tuck it in or lengthen it out depending on where you're going to mount the battery so if you have a lot of gear in the front and you have to move the battery your wire lead for your motor uh, i'm sorry for your battery can actually extend to meet your battery connector
Now that we have all of our ESC wires and our motors mounted, what we're going to do is we're going to pass the leads for the ESCs through the top plate through a hole that we're going to drill just off center of the KK board so it'll go from the hole right to the leads or to the pins that are needed for the KK board. Once we do that, we can go ahead and put the back plate or the bottom plate onto the uh, quad frame. But before we pass it through, we're going to want to mark down each lead to make sure we have the front right motor, back right motor, front left and back left established. That'll make hooking it up all the easier. We are on the home stretch. We have mounted our KK board. In this case, it's the version 2.1 uh, to our board, uh, our quad frame, and we've took special care to make sure it was mounted exactly in the middle. We, we measured from boom to boom and marked the middle point, and we also made sure that the orientation of the arrow was pointing towards the front of the quadcopter, not the back. Now, if there's any confusion about setting up these quadcopters, we had two really great videos. One's a quad setup, and one's a quad programming. Because this requires the X configuration to fly properly, if you try to hook this up in plus configuration, you're not going to have any luck. Also, if you guys are kind of intimidated about that, Hobby King came out with a really great new board. Uh, it's the I-86 board. It has MEMS gyros on it, but rather than having to hook up, uh, hook up an AVR, USB, ASP, 123, something like that, what you can do is you can actually flip dip switches. This will take you from plus configuration to X configuration to uh, uh, hexacopter to Y6 to tricopter, also airplane stabilization mode, which is amazing. The only reason I'm not hooking this up right now is because we're using the red bricks, I'm not too sure how they fly. Um, I wanna use the least different uh, denominators as compared to our review plane. So everything's the same on this, except for those red bricks. If we have good performance, I'm gonna definitely switch this guy out for this guy later, because I wanna try out those MEMS gyros. The next step for us is gonna be to uh, hook this up to our receiver. We're gonna power it up, and we're gonna run it up to make sure all of our ESCs are running the motors in their proper locations. And also when we give left, that the proper motors go up and forward and backwards and in all our directions. We wanna verify this before we ever put the props on, because if we put the props on, it can bite us. So the next step is to balance our props, install them, and go out and maiden them. And we're going to do that right now. But first, I want to thank Hobby King for sponsoring this episode. I want to encourage you guys to uh, chat it up on Facebook and our forums, and also check out our website. Things are changing, and more and more incredible people are putting articles on with just really, really great content. But they won't know it's really great content until you rate it. So please, I encourage you to do that as well. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and set this up. We're going to go out and maiden it, and hopefully those red bricks work. I'd say the red bricks work good. 